all my Kenvians, and welcome to a brand new episode of Discovering Steven Universe. Rose's Room. This was just a bizarre episode, and let's just get into my favorite parts of it. Starting with <laughs> where Steven is talking to the gyms and trying to get them to go golfing with him, and he brings out the golf pants. And <laughs> there's, there's dad's golf pants, obviously. But they just, uh, and I know this would maybe be a silly thing to have be one of my favorites, but it's just, first of all, the design of the pants, it's so typical, like, I, maybe it's 70s or 80s golf pants, like what you see in some of the older movies. I just absolutely love that. But the fact that Garnet is actually wearing them in the final scene of the episode, I loved that. Like, I didn't expect it at all. I actually completely forgot about the pants until that scene. And I was just like, ah, she wore them! That's awesome! And uh, it's a small detail, but I just... It's just one of the things about this show that I'm really coming to love is how they pay attention to these really small details in a wonderful way. And it just comes to surprise you whenever, like, something, like in my case, I just forgot, comes back at the end of an episode, or maybe a few episodes later. It's hard to tell sometimes. But moving on from there, my second favorite part of this episode was Golf Quest. And not only Golf Quest, but Golf Quest on the Nintendo 64? <laughs> First of all, the cutscenes and the uh, 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 spoken voices on that game is astounding for a Nintendo 64. It's just phenomenal. I had no idea they could make it look so good. <laughs> but the I, I liked the concept of the game. It reminded me of playing Final Fantasy as a kid, Chrono Trigger and all that. Just going and playing these silly little games and spending all night playing them to get as far as I could. I don't think I really had many games, uh, as, like, RPG-wise, where you could actually finish them in a night like Steven did, <laughs> but it just, uh, it, that, that scene brought back so many memories and so many days of my youth <laughs> spent staying up late just to try and beat a game, especially when it's a weekend and it, it's a game I just rented, uh, for those of you kids that are too young for it, we used to go to rental stores like Blockbuster and Mom and Ma and Pa, local stores if they still existed at the time and hadn't been put out of business by Blockbuster, <laughs> but that's besides the point. The I, It just reminded me so much of those weekends and I absolutely loved it. Uh, moving on, oh, oh, and actually before I move on, <laughs> the part where the gems come back and Steven's trying to watch the secret ending and the gems keep bothering him and getting in the way and then they end up breaking the TV while no one ever broke a TV. <laughs> when you're like me and you were really into a game and you were just like hyper focused on what's going on and you had been playing for hours and hours the last thing you wanted was someone to interrupt you or get in your way or your mom to ask you to do something like chores, which I should have done, but it was still bothered me. <laughs> so yeah, that was just, that was something I could definitely relate to as far as the character goes. But moving on, my third favorite part of this episode, the infinite creativity in Rose's room. And I guess like the next few points are going to kind of touch on that too. But just the idea that in Rose's room, anything can theoretically be created. Like it doesn't even have to be something that like the room already knows about per se, because it was able to com uh, show Steven the ending of this game in its entirety. And so just the, there's, it's like endless possibilities that can come forth from that room, which to touch on in the following parts, my fourth favorite part of this episode was the tiny floating whale. I'm sorry, that was adorable. I know I'm a dork. <laughs> that was freaking adorable, and I'm actually going to touch on the tiny floating whale here in a little bit, so stick with me. Uh, my fifth and final favorite part of this episode was 
basically almost the entire end sequence of the episode, except for the very final part when Steven does finally escape. But the when it goes from this beautiful cloud-filled dreamy area to this empty terrifying nightmare world and it's not like there's ghouls and ghosts everywhere but it's just it's empty and completely devoid of personality like it starts out having like a little bit of personality because it shows Lars and Sadie I think her name is um as like they're talking to Steven but it's like it's very creepy and deadpan and then they like scroll out back and then we see onion and well to be honest i didn't expect much from onion anyway so that kind of threw me off because i was like uh, i couldn't tell if that might have been a dream world or not dream world but the imaginary world or what but i have to say the two parts that honestly freaked me out the most one being super understandable the other is probably more i don't know it might be just more personal to me but probably the most terrifying is when we see Frybo in the window. Like, that thing was creepy enough in its own episode, but just sitting there with the gigantic eyes looking out the window and then handing out the fry bits and handing out the fry bits and handing out the fry bits and it's like they, they they're not even stacking up which i thought was happening at first but they just it basically copies over one after the other and even now talking about it is giving me chills just thinking about that and then uh, but yeah that's definitely the creepiest part of it part of it all but then the other like next to creepiest part of that entire segment was steven's dad and it's I think it was because it honestly did take me by surprise because I was thinking that maybe something had happened and Rosa's room had sort of like taken over uh, the rest of the world or at least the rest of the town. Stranger things have happened in cartoons and shows and Doctor Who and blah blah blah. But <laughs> we see Steven's dad and he seems just fine at first. Like it seems legitim legitimately like Steven's dad. And then all of a sudden, you notice the little quirks. It's like, well, well the first time it does like the thing, you, you know, you don't really pay any attention to it. But then he offers a bit more advice, and as Stephen points out, it's, it makes doesn't make sense. And then he does the da -da 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 thing again. And I can't remember if like the creepy music started to kick in there or not. But for me, while I was watching, I was just like, oh God, what's What's wrong with his dad? Is it like again because it, I couldn't decide whether or not this was like still within Rose's room or whatever. Which Stephen does figure out that he's still in the room, but it was honestly just really, really creepy and really got to me. So yeah, those are all my favorite parts of this episode. And uh, yet again, I don't think I had any for the previous episode either. I have no annoyances. I have no annoyances with this episode. It was just insanely, uh, it, it was just insane. It was so, so bizarre that it was just hard to wrap my mind around, which if you want to call that a negative, whatever. But yeah, it was just really, really good. Um, again, I'm giving away my overall. <laughs> But um, if you have any of your own favorite parts of the episode slash annoyances, please do let me know in the comments down below. Now, moving on, as for tracks of the episode, I did finally find the official soundtrack, or what I believe is the official soundtrack. And there are two, technically they're tracks, but two different um, categories, maybe I guess you would say, as far as this episode goes. Primarily because the first one is the Golf Quest music. It just reminded me so much of Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, just like those classic RPG tunes that you would hear, especially back on the Super Nintendo and maybe even uh, PlayStation back in the day. But yeah, I just absolutely loved that. And then 
my second favorite track of the episode is the music that's playing when Steven is in Rose's room before everything goes super nightmare ugh. but just that that beautiful soft music um I can't help but think that whenever we do see Rose like you know the actual character Rose because I can only assume there's going to be a flashback of her at some point that that music might actually play or, or I, I don't know I could be way off base there but in my mind it seems like when we do finally see her that that'll be the music that's playing or at least I hope so it'll probably probably be at least similar in some form but if you know of any other tracks that are your favorites or if you agree with me please do let me know in the comments down below as for my quote of the episode the, the one that just, it made me laugh out loud, and it's, as with most of the episodes, it doesn't really, it's not anything super impactful or amazing, but it's when Steven's commenting about how he hasn't been able to stop going to the bathroom because he ate all that creamed corn. And the quote of the episode is, so much corn. <laughs> just... The way it's executed and the way that they uh, animated him to look during that part just, it works so well and it honestly did make me crack up. Any other quotes that you think of, let me know in the comments, obviously. Um, and before I get to my overall thoughts, which as always are probably pretty obvious at this point, I do have actually two questions for this. No theories, but two questions. Actually, scratch that. One question and one theory. I'm going to switch one of the questions to being a theory. Did that right off the top of my head. Yes. Anyway, continuing. My question for this episode is, could Rose's room have killed Stephen? Because like, uh, like even when he told the gems what the room created, they, they kind of freaked out saying, her room can't handle that, which was obvious because of the way everything was acting. But just like with the seemingly terror that they reacted to, including Amethyst, like she was just like her mouth was wide open uh, at this news. So like had it gone too far, could Steven have died? Or could Steven have been lost forever potentially within the within the room it's that's on it that's a question that i would honestly like to know I, it's probably not answered and it probably will never be answered in the context of the show but that's something i'm legitimately legitimately curious about it's like could rose's room because of its infinite possibilities its infinite creativity if overloaded could it kill the person that is controlling it, in a sense. I don't know. But that move brings us to my theory for the episode, and that is... Well, the original question was, whose voice did the whale speak with at the end? And... My theory in kind of answer to that question is... What if the whale spoke in... Rose's voice. Because at this point in the show, Rose hasn't spoken, or there haven't, uh, like, Ro the actual Rose hasn't been on screen to speak. There haven't been any recordings of her, to the best of my, best of my recollection. Any flashbacks with her yet. So what if, and I'm not going to check the voice acting, because whenever we do see Rose, I'll probably go back and compare it. But my theory is that that whale spoke with Rose's voice. I don't know. I mean, obviously don't know for sure, but that's just my theory. It's just a theory. A Steven Universe theory. <laughs> Sorry, game theory for any of you that don't know. But all right, as for my overall thoughts, again, it should be painfully obvious at this point, but I really did like this episode. Like I've mentioned with others, it took me by surprise for sure. I was not expecting just the level of creepiness that this episode went to. Like, you know, at first it was just kind of silly, and then we have the RPG, and that's cute, ha ha ha. 
and then we go into the room and it was just like oh wow this is really cool it's like you know we're kind of sort of learning a little bit more about rose in a way because it seems clear that to her it's like you know the creativity the imagination is a very big part of her i assume but then we just get into this nightmare version of the town and i just I don't even know what to make of it. It's it just it blew my mind, honestly. And I, I kind of hope we see something like that again. If for no other reason, then we might learn more about the room, might learn more about Rose, maybe. Don't know. But all right, those are my overall thoughts. Let me know, as I mentioned before, for everything else, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, your favorite, um, your favorites, your annoyances, quotes, music, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Sorry, but next episode we will be talking about Coach Steven, which I'm actually going to watch as soon as I finish this recording. So until next time everyone, I am Papa Ken, and later days.